I've actually got a wee bit of a unique story. Uh, I was at school and my grades weren't too good. Uh, not exactly a brain box. And uh, my friend Connor Young, he started modelling and I thought I'd apply as well. So I signed up to the to Colours Agency website and took a few selfies and sent them. I got discovered when I was 17. I got into contact with Mark um, Conlon at Colours. Um, and I went into the agency and I did kind of like a little test shoot um, some digitals and then kind of spoke to Alison and the team just to kind of get for them to get my personality. Um, what was going through my mind? I feel like at 17 I was brand new at university and um, kind of was looking for a part-time job so I was just excited to just have some form of a job. Um, I really didn't know what like would come with modelling so I was just excited to have that to be honest. So I was, I was told to start modeling by my stepmom, um, and we decided to send some photos into colors and we went and had a meeting and they were all so lovely. And yeah, it was kind of just like a, I'll come in, sign the bit of paper and then start working. Well, slowly. Uh, I would say I do not balance them. Uh, I put all my effort into modeling, and that's, and that's that. Um, I feel like it's been a process of trial and error, to be honest. Um, I think a lot. Of, I'm, I've learned a lot from when I was younger and starting out um, from modeling. I've learned to just kind of say no um, to things that just don't align with like my values or my personality, um, and be okay with saying no. Uh, damn. Deep question. Um, I think uh, the modeling industry can sometimes eat somebody up. You know, you're constantly competing with people. You're uh, you, you need to look great all the time. And we're in today's day and age. They tell you you don't need to look a certain way. You're beautiful no matter what. But we know as models that it's not the case in our job. You know, you you have to look aesthetically brilliant. Um, so it's a hard thing to do. But it's just separating your ego from from your work i suppose trying to keep a, a two separate lives almost it's hard to it's hard to do but it's dangerous to mix uh, i definitely like uh, flamboyant stuff i like uh, velvet and uh, knitwear sleeveless knitwear sweater vests uh, shorts and ties. I'm really a big fan of shorts and ties. I feel like I love really long flowy dresses. Um, I think it almost makes me feel empowered in a way. Um, and I feel like in life I've had to go through a lot of things that haven't, that kind of knocked down my confidence and I've had to try and build my confidence a lot. So when I wear dresses like that, it just is a it's just a resemblance of how empowered I feel. So. Uh, I'd say jeans and a jumper, really. You know what I mean, I think uh, I like to be comfortable and you can, you can look good in jeans and a jumper, so. I'd like to work with David Gandhi because he's the kind of first male model who is like hunky and not uh, too skinny, whatever. I think he paved the way for a lot of us uh, other models. So I actually have to mention a photographer close to home, um, Toby Ass. I worked with him when I was first just starting out with modelling, um, Toby Astelqua. He and I, I've, I've just loved seeing his journey because, you know, he was, he really, I don't think he realised how amazing he was. And when I met him, I, I, I remember I said to him, like, you will do amazing, you will do really, really well because his work was amazing. And I don't think he truly believed in himself. And now I see his work and he's in London and he's doing things like Vogue and GQ and um, Grazia and I'm really proud of him because um, I, I literally watched him just starting out from the beginning so it truly has been a journey. Designer, uh, ever since like when I started modelling I wanted to work with Tommy Hilfiger like that was uh, mostly because of the 90s stuff. I'm not so into Tommy Hilfiger these days but because that was the first thing I wanted to do that's what that's that's the dream. 
Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, I was I was actually ecstatic about it. I was really happy. I was nervous as well, though. Um, but I, I was just happy to get it kind of over and done with because I didn't want my outfit to get cancelled or anything. So I wasn't fully really relaxed until it was over. Um, I was really excited. Um, I, I booked my first show at London Fashion Week um, when I was 17, I would say, and I didn't think I was going to get a show at all. It was, a, it was, it came to that last day of shows, and I really didn't think I was going to book anything. And then I did, and I, and I was just really, really excited to just get out there um, and walk. And it's kind of like an adrenal, adrenaline rush. Like when you go out there, you come out, and you just feel you're on a high. You just feel so good afterwards, and you just want to go back out there again. So. Yeah, it was really great. Well, I've ever, never actually booked a well-known designer, but, uh, you know, walking for the first time felt amazing. It feels like, you know, when you don't know anything about modeling, it's kind of you only see the catwalk. And you think that's kind of the only, the only thing there is. So once you finally walk, it feels a lot more meaningful than just, I don't know, an e-com shoot. It's one of my favourite brands to work with in the world. Um, they're very good to us. I enjoy working with them. Their clothes, I love their clothes as well. And the people are always very kind. Yeah, as Martin said, they treat us well. They're good. We had a lot of good fun. Um, it helps when you're working with a team to like push energy into you. And usually with these bigger brands, they do that really well. So it's always a pleasure. Pasta, pizza, sushi. I love uh, peanut butter and a uh, dark chocolate. And if you put it in the microwave and melt it, it tastes really good. A good bowl of pasta. You'll see me in Sugo every single weekend. <laughs> Duty is a big fat pizza, you know, just whatever. The cheesiest thing possible, yeah. Big fat pizza. <laughs> That's a bit of a, a deep one. Um, I'm not. I'm not really sure. I, I like to, you know, I want to book as many jobs as possible and having a six pack helps doing that. Um, I feel like, again, it's just been a process of learning and trial and error and learning about yourself and what makes you happy and what doesn't make you happy. Um, and I think I've kind of watched other people go through certain things along the way and learn what to do and what not to do. And also, I just think it's about what makes you comfortable and what ha and makes you happy. Like, I if something doesn't make me comfortable, I don't want to do it. I won't do it. Um, and I feel okay with saying no now. But back then, I think when I was 17 and younger, I would have said yes to anything. Um, but yeah, I think it's just just being yourself. Well, obviously I have to be trim, but I, luckily, like, I feel like most models are, are born with good genetics. You know, it doesn't actually take me that much work to stay in shape, but obviously as Martin says, you know, you need to be at your best all the time in order to book as many jobs as you can so uh, it's it's hard not to feel pressure but you can't be too hard on yourself because at the end of the day it's as good as you're gonna get not don't ever compare yourself to somebody else's body you know you are you uh, the most challenging part uh, of my modern career was probably at the beginning uh, I had kind of longer hair and I wasn't working very often. I remember I was in London for like three months. I'd done like two castings. It was an absolute slog. And yeah, that was difficult. I would say London Fashion Week. There was a time where I woke up at six o'clock in the morning and I thought that I was going to get my hair done. So I had like bed head and um, I got to the, I got behind the backstage and everyone was getting their hair done. And I, there was me and somebody else who had the same kind of hair as me. And we, we were the last two people to get called um, to get our hair done. And we thought, what is going on? Are we not getting our hair done? Because I haven't done anything. And um, they just kind of said, oh, just, you know, give it a little brush kind of thing. It was very, it was very passive. It was very much like you watched everybody else getting their hair done and straightened or curled and they were getting the full works and we kind of had to whip out our own little kit to just do, to, to make ourselves look presentable on stage because we, we genuinely, they just genuinely didn't do um, um, a lot with our hair. And I think that's what made me realise just how difficult it is in the industry 
when it comes to black hair. Um, people, a lot of people don't really know what they're doing still. Um, so for me, it's, it's when you say that you are a hairdresser, for me, that is knowing how to do black hair and hair for Caucasian um, and other places. I think when I was in Tokyo last year, I stayed for, I was meant to stay for two months and I ended up staying for four months. And in the third month, I, I just really missed home. I was struggling with the cultural differences over there. I felt like I had no like real friends there, although I had met some lovely people, I just felt lost. So I think sticking in and staying in the country for two months and working and making money, like, that was me overcoming it, but it was certainly challenging. Yeah. I'm probably not the best person to ask this question, but uh, it's really nice to see that everybody's getting involved and in, uh, all genders and sizes and races. I think the industry has made um, a lot of progress, even within the time that I started modeling, and um, just even within, in terms of gender, um, you see them including non-binary um, individuals as well as just female or male. Um, and I think in terms of race, I think there's always some form of room for progression and learning. But I also think that the most important thing is just listening to the models or the creatives that you're working with and hearing them out from their, hearing their experiences and hearing what, what to do and what not to do, just learning from them. I think diversity is obviously very important in every line of work, modeling especially, you know, you're, you're representing something, you want to show every gender, every sex, you know, whatever, but I, I think in the fashion industry, you create bubbles in different countries that, that won't be as inclusive as you think, and it's a bit more exclusive, so, uh, you know, you get every country you go to people, models from that country struggle to work. I mean, it's always what's different. People seem to like what's different nowadays. So I think the idea of inclusivity isn't, isn't really that pristine. I don't think it's an, like we're doing it that I have an amazing dressing room with a big massive mirror in a trailer van, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, I would say um, is when you're getting dressed up um, for shows, I've had to get dressed up in the most bizarre places i've been i've had to get dressed up in a tent in a park um, or um just like in little camping tents um everywhere and anywhere so it's not like you've got this big massive dressing room with a chair that has your name on it um so yeah so after my first show in london i was super stoked it was it was a free bar everything amazing people beautiful people all around me um, and I was living this really high life for about three hours and then the party finished and it was 3 a.m. in London and I had to run to my last bus home and then it took me like an hour and a half to get home. So it was a real kind of, you know, riches to rags all of a sudden. And it was, it, it, I remember saying to myself like, wow, this is actually what it's about. You know, modeling's not like private jets and expensive drinks and food. It's, it's running to get the bus, you know? Yeah. I think the biggest misconception about the fashion and model industry is that it's easy and it's, uh, it's all just glamorous, it's pretty brutal and it's, uh, you know, it's long. It is difficult, believe, and believe me. And uh, I don't know how I would show people that. You can come, come live with me or Sam if you want and see what it's like. We don't keep the clothes but if you'd like to let the designers know that we'd love to keep the clothes and that'd be great. Yeah, I think just that, you know, it's, um, it, it's harder than it looks, the actual work. You, at the end of the day, models are performing every time they get in front of the camera. Everybody on the team has, has a huge amount of pressure on them on the day to perform. Um, so I think that's what I'd say. It's a, it's, a lot, it's a lot more stressful than people say it is or seem to reckon. Uh, it would probably be my Dutch agent, John Brooks, uh, shaving off my hair um, and giving me a buzz cut or skin head. Um, I think my, my trip to Japan was really eye-opening. It showed me what I could do with the work, showed me, um, showed me the opportunities that would come my way. Um, so it has to be that. It changed my life completely.
Uh, stop going out as much and uh, do more test shoots, man. Do more test shoots. I would tell my younger self to just do what you want to do. Don't do things just to make everybody else happy because that's when you become unhappy. Um, do what makes you feel good. Um, I'd probably say start putting in the work a lot earlier. Um, figure out what you want, and once you find that out, stick with it.